it's hard when you are in the modeling industry. Like there is, it's a hard place to be separate because there is so much seduction and impurity within it. What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to be here with you all today. As you may know, in Romans chapter 12, it talks about how we're not supposed to be conformed to the patterns of this world. Come on somebody. So if you want to be a biblical Christian, comment down below right now. I want to be a biblical Christian. Christian. We're going to be talking about somewhat of what it means to be a biblical woman today and just a little bit of my backstory with being in the modeling industry. So before we get into it, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, you know, it makes the little colors like confetti now or whatever. <laughs> Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload new content, new videos. If you did not know this, and I don't know, I think I've talked about it on my channel, like maybe my very first video that I uploaded, how I was in the modeling industry and it was just like more of like local stuff. But when I was 17 years old, after I graduated, I went into the modeling industry. I found a modeling agency that was somewhat near me. It was like an hour away. And I actually ended up going to modeling school. So I went into ministry, I went into children's pastoring, and I also went into modeling school. So before I started, you know, I went to them with a bunch of questions. I was like, you know, I can't model certain things. Like, I don't want to model bikinis and just some like standards that I had in my own personal life that I did not want to give into because I've heard that, you know, when you go into modeling, they try to get you to model certain things like bikinis and they try to get you to wear less clothing and all of the above. So I was a little bit more naive at this age, you know, just coming out of high school. I wasn't super, super mature yet. And I decided to go into it. Like I had standards and all of this stuff, but you know, I was like, okay, I'll go into the modeling industry. It seems fun. I'll do more of the acting stuff, the commercial acting and all of that. And when I first went there, like I was shown, you know, for example, Sonic, like like the, um, what is it, a drive through <laughs> Sonic drive through or whatever, you know, like the little fast food place. Like I was shown a picture of one of their models who did like modeling ads for them. She was dressed very modestly and you know, it was, it, it wasn't anything bad. It wasn't anything sensual or anything like that. So, so I went through the modeling school and honestly, like it helped me with just getting out of my comfort zone more because I was more of like, sh I was more shy. I was more shy back then. So it helped me get out of my comfort zone. And I don't fully regret it because I also got to minister to some people throughout that whole process. But yeah, so I went through the school and then I met with the agency after I went through the schooling and I actually ended up getting signed as a model there. Like I was a signed model with this agency. And I can like throw up some pictures on the screen so you guys can see like some of the pictures I took through it, but I even got a comp card. So I don't know if you guys know what a comp card is, but it's basically like a business card, like for models and you show this or you take it to castings with you. So when you like go to castings and stuff, like you will take this comp card and you will show them because as you go to castings, like you don't wear a lot of makeup. And so this kind of shows them like some of the shoots that you've done and what you look like with makeup and all of that stuff. And so, yeah, it's kind of like your model business card. And so when you go to castings, you're auditioning for certain events and modeling gigs and acting gigs and all of this stuff. And if they like you, then they'll pick you and then you get hired for an event. So I didn't get into a lot of it. I did a commercial for actually secret. I think I'm allowed to say this, but yeah, I'm, it's fine. <laughs> I did a commercial for a uh, secret deodorant, which I was just an extra. Like I was just a background, like, you know, I was in the background. I was an extra. Yeah. There was like a main actors and stuff. So I don't even think they ended up airing the commercial because I never saw it come out. They ended up coming out with a new campaign that was totally different. Like it was a totally different direction. So I was just doing stuff like that, you know, and I was doing photo shoots and just doing different things to build my portfolio as uh, a model. And so I was in the very beginning stages and I didn't get far into it, praise the Lord, but I saw so much impurity through it. And the Lord continually was opening my eyes to things. And I was just, you know, I was just like kind of innocent, like, you know, okay, I'll just do the fun stuff and all, and all that. And it'll be fun and it'll be fine. And yeah, so it just seems fun. Like it seems like a fun thing for girls to go into. So at this time, 
you know, I was born again. Like I was a spirit filled believer and I was just continually going through sanctification. So as I continue to grow with the Lord, like that's when he continued to reveal things to me. And that's when my discernment was growing and I could just see more and more like how wrong the modeling industry is. And so I remember going to an event and it was an event for models and growing your portfolio and collaborating with photographers. And I just remember the seduction, the impurity, just looking around and seeing all the seductive posing from everyone and just how unclean it was. Like I literally felt, thankfully I went there with, thankfully I went to this event with a couple other Christians, but I just felt such a bad spirit there. And I just started to see it more and more what a bad spirit there was behind a lot of this modeling stuff. Like not that it's all bad. And I don't know, I know Christian companies need models as well. Like that is, that is fine. Like, you know, you're selling your Christian merch and you're dressing modestly and that's great. That's fine. I totally get it. Like you got to advertise stuff like I'm just talking about the part of modeling that is just so sensual and you make the sensual faces and you know people are, have their mouth hanging open and like just the revealing clothing and you know even though I didn't get to the place where I was modeling bikinis and all that because I had a standard and the modeling agency kept trying to get me to model bikinis like they even would tell me like I remember them bringing me into their office one day and they already knew when I signed I was like I'm not doing bikinis but I remember them bringing me into their office and they were measuring me and stuff and they were like you would be awesome at modeling bikinis and they were really trying to get me to do this they were like you know here's this girl who also models for us she's a Christian and she models bikinis so why can't you maybe you should go talk to her and really pushing me to go talk to this girl who they said was a Christian who's modeling bikinis and just really trying to push me in that direction and I just held my ground. I was like, I'm sorry, I can't do this. It's against my beliefs. And, you know, <laughs> I have a relationship with Jesus, y'all. And I want to live holy and pure and I'm not modeling bikinis, okay? <laughs> what was the last straw for me is I remember that another agency came to the agency that I was signed with. And a lot of the models from our agency were there. And, you know, they just had a select group of us come to basically meet with this agency and see if we can get signed to another agency in another market because how it works is you know you can sign with multiple agencies as long as they're not in your market like I was just in a more local uh Cincinnati market I don't know how to explain that fully because I didn't really fully understand it myself but basically like I was in Ohio and this you know, agency was in Florida. And so it was possible that I signed with two agencies if I were to do that. I remember going into the room and I was, listen, y'all, I was, I was really thin at this point. Okay. I was, I was pretty thin. Like I wasn't like the thinnest, but I was thin. And I walk in there and the agency people look at me, they look at me and the guy looked at me like one of the head people of the agency. And he said, you need to lose a couple more inches and then maybe come back. Like he told me basically that I needed to lose more weight in order to be signed with them. Just the way that he interacted with me and that whole conversation went down and then him telling me that I need to lose more weight when I was already really thin, like that's when the Lord really revealed to me, like this is not for you and this is not what I have called you to. And so I remember just like, the more that I grew in holiness and purity before the Lord, the more I grew in sanctification, the more I grew closer to the Lord, the farther away I grew away from all of this stuff and just going to photo shoots and collabing with photographers and, you know, doing these events and all this stuff. And again, by the grace of God, I didn't get into a lot of the sensual stuff, the really bad stuff, but it's hard when you are in the modeling industry, like there is, it's a hard place to be separate because there is so much seduction and impurity within it. And I'm not saying that it's all bad, but there's so much of that wrapped up in it. It's all about you. It's all about your body. And a lot of what I was seeing is like, you know, working on self and, and trying to make self look better. And, you know, how can you improve yourself, your skin, skincare, your makeup, your hair, you know, get the best clothing like I was constantly spending money and I'm I was realizing like this is what the enemy is pushing with girls like young girls especially but girls and women of all ages there's this agenda being pushed in the world that girls need to look 
sexual and sensual and they need to wear less clothing and they need to attract guys that way that's that's what's pushed to us that's how you attract guys and listen women that is not how you attract a true biblical strong man of god you see TikTokers and influencers and all these people getting on there that all these young girls look up to and they just wear like really revealing clothing. They're showing their stomachs and a lot of their legs and their behinds and their front and all of that stuff. And they're dancing to these really perverted songs and they're dancing sensually. Like it's all... It's just what's being pushed to us as a culture for young women and women in general that we need to reveal our bodies. We need to act and carry ourselves in a sensual way in order for the world, for other people, for guys to like us. And whether you feel like that or not, maybe you're doing all this stuff, but you don't feel like, oh, I don't feel like I'm doing this for, for guys and all that stuff. But listen, it's a perverted way to live. And whether you know it or not, you are acting in a sensual way if you're dancing to all these sensual songs and you're carrying yourself that way. And if you are being seductive and you're dancing in a seductive way. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 through 2 says this, I appeal to you therefore brothers by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So you being holy, you being a living sacrifice unto the Lord, that is your spiritual worship worship. You are glorifying God. It talks about glorifying God with your bodies. So verse two, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. When you renew your mind by the power of the Holy Spirit with the word of God, you actually will be able to have better discernment. You'll be able to see clearly in the world the separation between worldliness and seduction and lust, the lust of the flesh and how the world follows after the desires and the lust of their flesh. You'll be able to discern more between that and then what is holy, what is pure, what is of the Lord. See, this: the culture pushes be a boss woman, you know, the feministic feminism movement, be a boss woman, you know, be a, be this strong boss woman. And they say bad words that I'm not going to repeat and all this stuff. Like they push that there's this agenda being pushed, but that's not God's design for a woman. However, we listen as women, we can be strong women in Proverbs 31. It talks about how she makes a Proverbs 31 woman makes her arms strong. Like it's okay to be a strong woman. And I'm just looking at Proverbs 31 right here. Like it's talking about a virtuous wife and how her worth is far above rubies. It says the heart of her husband safely trusts her. It says she does him good and not evil all the days of her life. It says she willingly works with her hands. She rises while it is yet night. She provides food for her household. And it, in verse 17, it says she girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. It says her lamp does not go out by night. She extends her hand to the poor. She reaches out her hands to the needy. If you go to verse 25, it says strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She's not idle. She's not stagnant. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Listen to this verse. This is so important. Proverbs 31 verse 30. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. See, charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. There is something about being a beautiful biblical woman when you are when you are a biblical woman when you fear the lord you are beautiful you are fearfully and wonderfully made don't listen to the lies of culture that say you have to look a certain way to be i'm getting fired up y'all to be beautiful to look good listen you are beautiful in the eyes of god how he made you he made you his beautiful creation and if you can look in the mirror and say you know i'm not beautiful and you have all these insecurities you're actually saying that a creation that god made is ugly god made you beautiful because you are his creation there are so many insecurities for women 
men too. I'm just addressing women right now. Listen, there is, there's things that both men and women need to deal with when it comes to being a biblical man and a biblical woman, but I'm really addressing women right now because this is a problem in our culture and I'm a woman and I want to address women. And if you're a guy watching this, that is totally fine because we need to know how to treat women, right? <laughs> so a lot of times the world, the enemy will try to shame you. He'll try to speak lies to you to tell you that that's not good enough and that you have to go out in the world and be a boss woman and work and all these things and you have to show off your body, but no, there is something beautiful about a gentle and quiet spirit. It actually talks about this in first Peter chapter three. It talks about respect. I, I encourage you guys to go read this, but it talks about for a woman, respectful and pure conduct, innocent, modest, clean. It talks about in first Peter chapter three, verses three and four, do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of your hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty. So this kind of beauty is imperishable. It doesn't fade away. This outward stuff, this makeup, it all fades away. It all perishes, right? But the imperishable beauty that continues on into eternity, that's what's truly beautiful. It says, with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands. Listen, when it talks about gentle and quiet, I was looking up definitions and looking it up in the Greek. So gentle, it means mild. It means humble, meek submissive. Just think about gentleness. It's it's opposite to self-seeking and self-interest. When you're gentle, when you're humble, you are not a self-seeking person. You're looking, how can I help others? How can I help the needs of others? And, and you are a gentle person. You're kind. You have so much kindness and care and compassion. And, and that word quiet, it's peaceable, tranquil, calm, undisturbing. You know, it's not this demonic thing where we're going out there and we're being these loud and rambunctious women and showing off our bodies and screaming and going to women's marches and all of this stuff that is against the Bible, pushing these agendas in my body, my choice. And if I want to kill my baby, I can. No, that is so demonic. That is earthly, sensual, demonic. Those are doctrines of demons. Stay far away from them. That is not biblical womanhood. There is, listen, I'm encouraging you women. There's something so beautiful about being a biblical woman, about being gentle and quiet, letting your adorning be internal instead of external. God sees the heart. He knows the heart. Live your life holy and pure unto God. It says, I keep bumping the mic. It says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7, for God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. And it is so cool, the calling that God can have on your life. You know, God can use you for great things. I'm not telling you that you know, God calls every woman to stay at home and take care of her family because there are some women called the singleness. But if you are a wife, you know, the husband is the head of the home. Read First Peter 3, read Ephesians. Like there's multiple verses and I can go into this in, a, in another video. I can go into this more, but the husband biblically is the head of the home and we're called to submit and we are called to submit and we're called to, to help our family and to care for our family and raise godly children. Like that is what we are called to do. If you have a family, if you have children, we are called to flee sexual immorality. We are called to flee from lustful things. Like we are not supposed to be a lustful person and lusting after the desires of the flesh and lusting after sexual things, but we are supposed to be pure and holy women. And you know how beautiful that is. See, the enemy will try to deceive you. Just like the enemy came to Eve and tried to deceive her in the Garden of Eden saying, did God really say? He literally was trying to get her to question what God actually said. And so what I'm encouraging you, don't listen to the lies of the enemy. And if you want to read that passage, it's in Genesis chapter three, verses one through three, but don't allow the enemy to try to confuse you, to try to get you to question what God actually says about being a biblical woman. It is so beautiful to live with a heart of purity and to live eternity minded for eternity, not storing up your treasures on earth now, but storing up your treasures in heaven and being a pure woman of God. So come on somebody, let's be strong in the Lord. Let's be strong women in the Lord, not strong women in the world. No, I don't want that, that fades away. I wanna be a strong woman in the Lord, come on.
But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure to leave a comment with your thoughts. I love you guys. God bless you guys. Keep looking to Jesus. Remember that everything's going to be all good and peace out. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. Make sure to check out my other videos over here and subscribe over there.